is the 250 mile an hour world's fastest RC car project. In the last video, we got to 193 mile an hour, and then the wheels exploded and we crashed it a little bit. Oh, oh, no. oh no! Oh, oh. 193 on the GPS. Yeah. <laughs> this RC car has four motors, 25 horsepower each, 100 horsepower in total. And this car suffers from exactly the same problem that all the other world's fastest 200 mile an hour RC cars have, and that is the tires just will not hold up the foam. It just comes off. So in this video, we're gonna try and come up with a tire that can take over 250 mile an hour. A lot of people in the last video says, why don't you use rubber tires? Well, rubber tyre is a lot heavier, centrifugal force is a lot greater, these can only take about 150 mile an hour before they go pop. So far the world's fastest RC car has gone over 220 mile an hour and that was using foam tyres. So up until this point here, foam is the way to go but with these speeds that we're trying to get now, even the foam will not hold up. So. Let's have a little mess about and see what we can come up with. And then we're going to take the car out again and see how fast it can go. So here I've built myself a tyre dyno. It's just a motor, direct drive, straight to the wheel. We're going to spin this up. We've got an RPM counter here. that says on the screen here how fast the tyre is spinning. We're going to see which tyre design can spin the fastest. And then we can measure the tyre diameter. Look on here what the RPM is. Put those details into the computer and then there it's going to tell us how fast the car is going to go. Now bear in mind there is no load actually on on the tyre pushing it down onto the road so the results maybe not that accurate but at least we can see how fast a foam tyre can go then I can come up with my own tyre design and see how fast that can go and if it goes more than the foam tyre then in theory the car should go faster. Now in future we could always add a roller to the bottom of there pushing onto the tyre to simulate the road but for now we're just going to run it like this. So first of all we're going to run a contact foam then we're going to try Gone Bananas which is regarded as the best foams in the industry. I've got some Gone Banana prototypes here that apparently are going to go a lot faster. I've only got four though so I don't really want to blow them. And then here I've got my own tyre design which is a little bit secret so we're going to try that on there too. I'm really hoping that this tyre design here is really really going to go over that 250 mile an hour mark so here we go contact foam first so i've got this contraption here controlled by rc so i can get myself out of the room into safety check this out look how much that is expanding just from a little bit of throttle so we've got a camera there seeing what the rpm is and what that is doing another camera there so we can get a side on profile let's see what happens right here we go here we go Look at that, it's all gone. Let's check it out in slow-mo. So that was about 23,000 RPM. We put that into the computer. 23,000 RPM, 100 millimeter tire. Wow. That is 269 mile per hour. Now we know in the real world, once there's load on the tire, the contact foams, what I've been told by other people, they can last up to about 170, 180 mile an hour. Next up, let's try a Gone Banana, same diameter. Boom! Jesus, look at that, they ripped apart the whole entire wheel. What? So I made that about 43,000 RPMs, that works out at 504 miles per hour. Look at that, where this tire blew, a piece of it must have come off and hit up here. Look at that, it dented that hose up there. And a bit of the plastic of it has ended up here. That's all for my sprinkler system, hopefully it's not going to set it off later. I'll tell you what was amazing though, is how far out this wheel was coning. I couldn't believe when I watched the slow motion that this came to about here. I mean, I'm surprised that foam even stayed on as well as it did. So what's making it come off must be like the combined G-force pulling it off and the abrasion of like the floor. So 
I don't know, mad, crazy. Anyway, broke me dyno, so I've got to put a new link on there, and then we'll be back in action. Boom! Back in action! Now, if you remember back on the video where I ran this car, I experimented with narrower tyres to sort of limit this action from happening, and also less foam on there. Like, I turned it down this way, making the tyre smaller. 91 millimetres, normally we run these at about 100 millimetres. My idea was less weight to try and pull it all off. So let's chuck this on the rig and see what happens. The motor actually ran out of power. I'll just reset it to ESC. We're going to get on it a bit quicker just to see what happens. But it seems to be holding it a lot better. That took it flat out. So the memory on here says 45,000 RPM. Next up, I want to try my prototype. Right. Let's see what this puppy's made of. Right, here we go. That took maximum RPM and it looks kind of intact. Guys, it's intact. The motor got to full RPM. It didn't blow, could be onto something. So this time it only revved to 23,000 RPM. I think what was happening, I did not balance up well. It was shaking so much, it made the ESC cut out. But still, 23,000 RPM on a 106 millimeter tire, that equals 285 miles per hour. So fingers crossed, I'm really hoping it's gonna hold up and we're gonna get that 250 mile an hour goal and smash the world record. So now, just out of curiosity, let's see how fast some stock rubber infraction wheels can go. Right, here we go. This is going to be violent. That sounded nasty. So 12,000 RPMs, that works out 140 mile an hour. That's pretty much bang on. So my homemade tire did 23,000 RPM, which is actually way less than the 45,000 RPM on the Gone Banana. I think what's happening, the vibration of this was shaking this whole rig, zapping the power, making the ESC cut out. So over here, we've got a prop balancer. You can put a wheel on there as well. Perfectly balanced the wheel. Let's chuck that on there, balance it. So we've got that on there. And what we've got to do is wait for it to stop. And then wherever it goes to the bottom, that's where the heavy bit is, and we add weight at the top. I'm sorry about blurring out the tyre. It's my own design. I don't really want other speedrunners to find out yet what I'm doing. Because I'm going after a world record, I wouldn't want someone to then get my idea and then make the bar even higher, make it even more difficult for me to get. Once I've got the record, then I don't really mind if someone else gets it. But for now, I want to at least once say that I've had the world record at one point in time, even if it's only for 30 seconds. So normally to balance, we use this pate stuff like we have on this one here. However, with the RPM, look at that. It's all starting to come off. So I'm going to try to do it with hot glue. So up here is where the wheel was the lightest. So I was going to go ahead and just squeeze a little bit of hot glue right there in the corner. Hopefully it's going to stick. Back on the balancer. And we need a bit more. And then we keep doing that until it stops spinning. Right, there we go. It stopped spinning. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. All right, here we go. All balanced up. Maximum RPM. No idea what's going to happen. Hopefully, it's not going to hit the sprinkler system we got up there. Oh my God, it did actually finally come off. So what happened there, on the first attempt, the ESC cut out again, it's probably still a bit of vibration there. So the second attempt, I really went for it and it got to only 15,000 RPM on the reader. I think it went a lot more because we got on it so quick and this just didn't pick it up quick enough. Anyway, I think it's gonna hold up. We're gonna try it out on that, I think. A few days later, look what just showed up. David at Scorch Parts don't mess about. We got the aluminium servo saver delete kit. Let's get it on there. So this stock unit has got so much flex in there, it made the steering awful, especially for a car this heavy. So this should fix it. Man, that is perfectly smooth. Zero slop, there's little ball bearings in there.
Next up, we've got to fit a new splitter. The next problem that we had is that the hexes were stripping out of the wheels. This thing had so much horsepower that once the power kicked in, it just stripped the hexes right off. So M2C Racing has this solution. So let's fit it on there and I'll show you how it works. Next up, we've got these little drilling jigs. So that goes inside your wheel. And this piece locates into here. Bolt in the middle to hold it. Then with the kit comes a drill bit. And now look, there's no way that that is ever going to strip off ever again. Yes! Postman just turned up. So a couple of diversion, three drive shafts from Perfect Pass. They're bigger pins, bigger ball, bigger diameter shaft, Perfect Pass ball shaft. Then here I've got a bearing block mount thing from Scorched Parts. It's actually this piece here from the motor mount, but two of them. So the idea is one this side, one this side, and then this all mounts in the middle here. And now, instead of having one long shaft that's gonna flap about, we've got two shorter ones. Also, check this out. These are some aluminium knuckles from Scorched parts just check out that quality these are actually for armor limitless but i'm going to retrofit them onto this vte2 on the stock armor ones these always come loose and it all flops about scorch they make everything so there's zero slop and everything moves perfectly freely also check it out in there look much bigger bearing this inner bearing on the armors often fails on the stock armor ones, you always round off that Allen key in there. So the Scorch ones come with a much bigger one that really locks in there tightly. The other good thing with these is you can adjust your camber by putting a wrench onto there. When you've got your wheel on there, it's impossible to get to it to do your camber. So this makes it a lot easier. So on the actual Scorch parts, there is no slop at all. But if we look at this link here, look, it's got a little bit of place. So we've got to fix that a bit later too. So here's how the centre drive shaft setup's going to look. So all we've got to do, drill it into the chassis, put the cover back on, boom. <laughs> There we go, we've got the whole four-wheel drive system working. Here we are, Redfin models. We've got Jason and Chris in the house. So we've got the speed sausage in Redfin models at the minute. Chris has just helped me set up a radio. We've just tried to calibrate. This ESC appears to be dead. It's not really driving that motor. So when we did that speed run, did 193 mile an hour, the back wheels were wheel spinning and the front wheels weren't. So your theory is... I think that ESC is dead, or almost dead. Very low output, yeah. It, it beeps really quietly and it barely drives the motor and sometimes not at all. So we did 193 mile an hour with double the power going to the back wheels. How fast do you think it's going to go? <laughs> with all four motors it working properly. When we get out, that's the thing. <laughs> it might be more stable. <laughs> yeah. Right, anyway, we're going to put a new ESC in there. Get this thing calibrated. Here we are back in the shop. New speed controller. Let's get it fitted and unleash the full 100 horsepower. Oh. Oh no, I rounded it off. Oh, and that one. And that one. Oh. Uh. Anyway, no big deal. We have this. got to do now is change the connectors over install it calibrate it so the quickest way to get these on there boom there we go back in action so max is just plugging in all the lipos and then we're going to see if it works we got that ready because you know we've had a few fires with these already hopefully not again today master esc on first then we can turn on all the other ones so now we pull that trigger and all those pinion gears should all turn Now we're just going to mesh them all in and just make sure that they all turn nicely together. There we go, we can see the tent of dry shaft all working. All the top shaft lovely and straight. Yeah. 
that was about half throttle. So that's that car ready to go. Hopefully, I've been speaking with Santa Pod, we can take it there to run it down their drag strip. So now with all four motors working, better wheels, the front and the rear end all connected, hopefully we're gonna get that record. Now this speed car here, this one's my armor limitless for the twin hobby wing. This one, I did crash as well at the last Russell event. Oh no! Oh, game over! Oh, we'll see how bad it is. Oh, ESC's out. Oh, wheel's off. I wonder if that's why it crashed. Oh, ESC, how many late pops have you got, sir? Oh, the, oh, all the light bows are gone. Both the really straps. Had four in there. So. Had to put in a new drive shaft. This one's now also got the M2C wheel hexes because that's why I crashed it last time. It stripped the hex off, wheel came off, I made the car crash. All I've got to do, mount these ESCs back in and we'll be back in action. So next video with the speed cars, we're going to let these things rip and hopefully get some world records. If these secret tyres hold up, I think something really special is going to happen. Subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss it. Oh.